Well, good morning. So my love affair with the barn owl goes back close to 70 years. And uh, I don't have a lot of factual information, but I do have a lot of anecdotal stories to tell you about them. So what happened? <clears throat> this is a photo of a barn owl in a nest box uh, that I took just peering through the opening, and I saw this female there with a few of the little pinksters. And she hardly even moved or looked concerned. You know, barn owls are pretty docile overall. Forward. Uh oh. What happened? Hit that. Barn owls have, uh, uh, of all the birds, have probably the, the widest distribution, uh, at least of all the owls. And they're found in every continent except uh, Antarctica and in many areas and continents except deserts um, such as North Africa. I hope I'm doing this right. The right one, thank you. Uh, in the States, uh, in New York, there are species of concern, which is uh, here. In yellow uh, states, barn owls are species of concern. In the pink areas, they're actually listed as endangered. Uh, down south in the more southern areas, they're fairly common, and they're less common in the, the lighter blue areas. <coughs> but they are distributed throughout the uh, United States. So where I come from in Jamaica Bay, I actually grew up near Aqueduct Racetrack, which was a 100-acre farm when I was a little kid. And uh, when I was about nine years old, I joined a gang. Uh, it was called the Rawhides. <laughs> and it was kind of a gang. We, uh, we had t-shirts with rawhides. And we went cruising on our little bikes out to, to explore the whole area. And one of the areas where we liked to explore was right around Kennedy Airport. And coming back from one of our adventures, uh, there was an old incinerator building. And I saw this bird fly out. And I said to my friends, that's an owl. And they said, nah, it's a seagull. You don't know it. So we discussed it. <coughs> the next day, we had another adventure, got on our bikes. We had uh, burlap sacks. We had brooms. We had uh, a grappling hook. I don't know if you know what a grappling hook is. Kind of used by the military for, for scaling over walls. Remember, this is soon after World War II. We had a lot of this equipment. So, so we actually scaled up on top of this, <coughs> this incinerator, went down, and there were two barn owls in there. And one flew out. The other one, we threw the burlap sack over. And then we drew straws to the side. Whoever got the shortest straw had to go down and get this thing and put it into the sack. <laughs> so we did that, and we brought it back to the, my friend's garage. We had a chicken wired off, and we, we uh, put the bird in there. <clears throat> now, this was all due to, to Frank Buck. Those of you who are older, remember Frank Buck. Bring, bring it back alive. Great television show. So brought it back to the garage. <clears throat> we said, what does it eat? I said, I don't know. can't feed it. So, so we had a little pigeon found a little pigeon. We put the pigeon in the barn owl. We waited. We were watching. We hoped this is going to be really good. You know, it's going to kill this thing, rip it apart. You know how little kids are? The true nature of human nature is shown best in 9 and 10-year-olds, right? If, you're, if you've read Lord of the Flies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <coughs> so it didn't eat the pigeon. All right. Next, we got a small cat. We put the cat in with the owls. It's going to be a really good fight. And the cat stayed in the area, and the owl stayed in. Anyway, they, uh, they never met. We let them go. Finally, we let the owl go. Hopefully, it survived. So years later, I'm trying to make up for my bad behavior as a youth it's, and uh, joined the National Park Service, where I, I worked for 25 years at Jamaica Bay Refuge and other areas in this area here. <laughs> we noticed there's some owls there. so. We started managing for owls. We got a, a nest box design from uh, Len Soucy from the Raptor Trust, the late, great Len Soucy over in, in New Jersey. It started putting up uh, these boxes on remote areas of the, of the bay. Hey. 
like the Canarsie Pole and some of these big islands out here. So, so over the years, uh, we started uh, notice we had a pretty good population of birds. And this is more recent uh, nest sites. Okay. So uh, the stronghold seemed to be Canarsie Pole. So these birds still did well where they were isolated on these islands where there's no habitat and enough food resources around the whole bay. So I've said over the years, we must have banded over 200 young birds in, in 30 years. And I've always said, and I've been saying it, that Jamaica Bay has the largest concentration of barn owls in New York State. Now, I, this, I've never been refuted. I don't know if it's true, but I keep saying <laughs> But I'll keep saying it until uh, proven wrong, right? <laughs> so here's Canarsie Pole, which is actually an old fill site. And uh, it's kind of isolated. It's really off limits. It used to be New York City's uh, largest heron colony. We had herons, egrets, ibis all throughout this area nesting until raccoons got out there. Once the raccoons got out there, the next year, all the nesting egrets left, all the ground nesting birds left, the, her the herring goes, and so on. And the owls are in boxes, uh, the raccoons were taking over some of the boxes. So we had to put some predator guards on them. So this is Chris Natareski, works for the New York City uh, Department of Environmental Protection. He's our banda, he's a real expert in handling these birds. And I just find them to be uh, perhaps the most beautiful of all the birds. Uh, incredible. They the gold color uh, on the wing and, and the gray mix is really very pretty. Isn't that beautiful? So, <laughs> you know, when a lot of these birds, you look at them, they kind of look at you askance. Dogs do that too, don't they? I like that. <laughs> My cat just turns her ears. Doesn't move ahead. But they're trying to, I guess they're trying to get a better sense of what you're talking, they're talking about or know when they're trying to listen to you. <clears throat> so they're, they're also, this is Taito Alber, the white owl, but also known as the monkey-faced owl, or the, the heart-faced owl, the ghost owl, the death owl, the church owl, the grass owl. So worldwide, it's, it's got many, many names. <clears throat> the males uh, differentiate from the females by coloration, the females, uh, a little more colorful, more orangey, warm brown breast. The males are typically whiter in color. And the females have spots. And I read that uh, the more spots you had, the more attractive you were. Um, and it, it's because that supposedly the females with a lot of spots have fewer parasitic flies on them. That's what I, how does that work? All right? Does a fly see that and then say, well, all the spots are taken, so I'll, I'll move on? <laughs> I, I didn't understand it. But anyway, they did studies where they took some spots off the females, and the, the males uh, paid less attention to them, you know, brought in less food to the, to the clutch. So it's interesting. <clears throat> well, oh, resetting. So these are different pat These are all the genus Taito or different colors and patterns. Um, as I said, they have worldwide distribution. Which way do I do this thing? Hello. I'm doing right button. Is it the lower right button? No, it's, a, it's, it's right here. It's, right it's, fro it's frozen for some reason. It's frozen. Anyway, you notice the different color from the, the alba, the white owl, also to the sooty owl, which is found in Borneo and uh, some of the forests of uh, Australia, and many colors in between and shades of colors in different areas. Nope. Not one. Technical glitches. There you go. You're up, you're up, you're okay, up and we running. Missed the, we missed the slide here. You're up and running. There you go. There we are. So, so there's the sooty owl, a you know, total dark owl of forest, and that makes sense, right? They blend in a forested environment. And the reddish owl from Madagascar, both of these are considered rare. <clears throat> but anyway, this is uh, Jamaica Bay, and this is what we do. 
Uh, we, there's the uh, typical owl box we use. And on every owl box, we'll have a, a tree swallow box. We like to get the most bang for our buck. <laughs> and, uh, and a predator guard right here. So all the boxes have to have predator guards. And it, it's a big uh, operation. This is my Restoration Corps kids. Every summer, I get to hire a dozen kids for eight weeks if I get funding. And we put up one of the boxes on one of the islands here. <laughs> so the problem, <laughs> for years, the main problem has been raccoons, all right? Raccoons' uh, populations are overabundant, found in every borough of New York City, throughout the city. Um, and they've taken over some of the boxes. So it, all the boxes now have to have raccoon guards. And you have to have it so uh, raccoons can't climb up and get over it on them, too. <coughs> and I also mentioned tree swallows. Tree swallows are amazing. They find boxes everywhere. Every tree swallow box that we put up gets taken. Even in a wooded area where, where I put uh, a box up for more of a, uh, a house wren or a the the tree, tree swallow found it. And uh, this one I was hoping for the trifecta, to have ospreys nest on top of it while the barn owls are inside and the, <laughs> and the tree swallow below. Uh, this is my backyard, and this is the dock, and this is a typical box. It's side opening, and we get to clean them out uh, you know, every year, take care of them. Uh, this is one box that's very popular at the refuge. It's called Big John's Pond. It's a pond we, we Ill illegally created in the 1980s. Anybody from DEC here? No. Uh, it, was, it was all a total area of Phragmites, and Bob Cook, who was the, was the herpetologist, wanted a pond to reintroduce reptiles and amphibians. So we got some guy with a bulldozer on the boulevard <laughs> to spend his lunch hour, basically, come down, and he dug this out. We planted native vegetation around the top, and it's become really a great spot. We, we have spring peepers and great tree, tree frogs and painted turtles and so on. They all use this spot. But we also had that one little barn owl box in the back, and that's been very popular among the birders. So this is the bird blind here. Unfortunately, this one has a little poison ivy <laughs> in the opening. But, but a lot of the birders, especially, uh, it's not easy to get, to get a year bird or a life bird. Barn owl is not easy. They're prickly, strictly nocturnal. So. so some birders that want to get that year bird and it's getting late in the year will sit in that blind for a couple of hours. So the owl looks out, peeks out, and you can check it off. <laughs> That's why I'm not a birder. <laughs> I'm a naturalist of sorts. <clears throat> anyway, Big John's Pond. Here's Cross Bay Boulevard. Easily accessible from the uh, visitor center. The next time you come, if you come to the Jamaica Bay Refuge, you want to visit Big John's Pond. Here's the West Pond and uh, the main buildings over here, parking lot. <clears throat> and Big John's Pond, these ponds is here. So. Anyway, these are two young owls, probably about eight weeks old. It usually takes about nine weeks for them to fully fledge. And this is that same uh, box. This is a photograph by Johann Schumacher, a, a good photographer. And here's a lucky shot I managed to grab, right? As it starts get hard, getting harder to see, I had to really punch up the ISO to really gather as much light as I could, you know, to uh, get this shot, the owl coming out right after dusk. Here's three uh, young owls in the box. They're probably about seven weeks old or so. They still have some fuzzy down on them. But uh, here's pretty much what happens from the egg the first couple of days. One week, maybe two weeks, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks. So in about 63 days, you go from egg to full-grown adult, which is pretty amazing, you know, how uh, birds, ospreys, and owls, and other birds can grow over just the course of a summer to full, full size. <coughs> Here's a couple of photos. Uh, <coughs> this guy's maybe uh, four and a half weeks or so. Still has a lot of down, but he's starting to get, got that heart-shaped look or monkey face look there. And actually has, you know, two concave uh, 
depression right by the eyes, which are really good for like a parabolic uh, instrument for collecting sound. And they perhaps uh, are the best birds or of any animal that's been studied uh, to show they have the, the greatest sense of hearing. They can fly in almost total darkness and a little scratching of a mouse in the grass or on the leaf litter can really hone in on it because they have one ear opening is on the left side is higher than the right side. So they'll get a sound from, from two different points and then they can kind of triangulate. And you'll see them weaving around like that. They're getting uh, pin, to be able to pinpoint that animal. Although they do have good night vision as well. But in almost total darkness, they can still hunt. Uh, <clears throat> but they are pretty ugly <laughs> when, you look, when you think about it. You know, this is a young owl. Um, and even though they have fully developed talons, they don't really use them. They're never able to grab you or, or hurt you if you're holding them. And sometimes we're holding the little owls, they'll actually fall asleep while you're holding them. Or what appears to, maybe, they, maybe they're just reacting to the light of day. But here's four in a box. Um, here's five. <laughs> Notice they're all banded. So we've banded over 200 of these. I don't know the exact number in the last 30 years. We've gotten very few results back. Um, a couple from New Jersey. Um, these owls don't really migrate per se. They more, more or less uh, disperse, go to different areas. Some may go south, some may go around, but, but after about 10 or 14 weeks in the area, the young leave the area. But one of the boxes had seven young, and since they hatch out asynch asynchronously, that uh, the young bird could be two weeks uh, younger than the first one that hatched out. So we had seven in the box. One of them was the little, what we call the runt of the litter. Now, you know, about three years later, we retrapped that bird as a nesting adult, which tells me that all seven of those birds probably survived. It means we have a lot of rats and mice in New York City area. <laughs> and as I said, they're pretty docile. You handle them. Um, these are probably about seven weeks old, seven and a half. This is that same box. And they'll be banded. But, uh, they really never, they, they kind of settle in. Sometimes they'll hiss at you, but as I said, they kind of settle into, maybe they just, you know, like a lot of wildlife, all right, that's the end of my life, that's my fate, so be it. You know? <laughs> but notice the long legs. Now, these, these are specialists for like grasslands. They'll hunt over open grasslands so they can reach down and grab that metal ball, um, which, which the studies uh, that Bob Cook did in the 80s for National Park Service showed that. The number one prey, uh, over 90%, I think, in the box were, were metabol, the bones and furs from the pellets. Uh, the other were Norway rats and maybe white-footed mice and so on. <laughs> so here's uh, one of the grasslands. This, this is Floyd Bennett Field. I better pay attention to the sign over here. <laughs> Mike is always chiding me on that. <clears throat> but anyway, in, the, in this grassland, which was New York City Audubon worked with the Park Service to keep this old Floyd Bennett field open and manage it as grassland. So that would be a, a really good hunting area for barn owls, kestrels, northern harriers, and so on. And even today, it's uh, over 100 acres of nice open space right around the western edge of uh, Jamaica Bay. And there's a couple of barn owl boxes out <coughs> along the fringe there. This one, uh, one of the... Uh, People, Ron Burke, who spent a lot of time out in those grasslands, took an old building and actually uh, put the plywood over all of it. A lot of it has fallen down over the years. But what he did was took this old building and he, he kept openings, small openings. And we did have a barn owl go in and nest there. So anytime I see an old building and I see a couple of broken windows, I say, that's a good site. Uh, or any old building that's going to be demolished. There was one at Ellis Island, I got a call from the ranger over there, was nesting on an old stairwell. But we were concerned because the building was going to be demolished. Unfortunately, that's uh, what happens over time. But that was called Owl Palace. We have a new park in Jamaica Bay, which are two old landfills, uh, Fountain Avenue and, and Penn Avenue landfills. 
400 acres combined has been taken over. It's still uh, owned by the National Park Service, the federal government, but it's going to be managed by the state. So this is a new state park called Shirley Chisholm State Park. Shirley Chisholm, I think, was one of the first black women Congress uh, people. So that's scheduled to be open this, uh, sometime this summer in July. But it'll be a great spot to get a high vantage point around, but also a good spot for owls to hunt because it'll be kept open as mostly grassland. <coughs> Kennedy Airport is on the uh, eastern end. 4,500 acres of salt marsh was filled in, you know, back in the 50s to do this. Something that you could not do today by law. But the, unfortunately, the owls love these open uh, habitat next to runways. And probably the greatest mortality of these owls in the area is done by uh, planes taking off I guess at night at Kennedy Airport. These owls hunt low uh, over the grasslands, probably looking down, listening, not paying attention to a, a swift moving plane. So I don't know how many that were recorded. 70 to 80 of these owls have been killed out here at Kennedy Airport. Um, it's probably the, the reason why they're not doing as well as they do. And it's one of the big jets. And, other birds seem to do okay with them. You know, the, the egrets never seem to get in trouble. They stay in the marshes. But uh, Kennedy Airport is, is a, has a big bird problem. You know, so, so every twice a year we meet over there, all the agencies, and talk about methods and things, trying to keep uh, make the airport less attractive to birds. Unfortunately, uh, one of the programs they have is the shooting program, USDA. So, in the interest of human safety, you have to be reasonable and. So they're allowed to shoot X number of birds, including snowy owls. <laughs> and a few years ago, they shot three snowy owls. Uh, they shoot thousands of gulls. Nobody cares, right? Uh, the first year, they shot 14,000 gulls, laughing gulls, herring gulls, black fat gulls. Nobody cared. Uh, they shoot three snowy owls. Everybody's up in arms, all the Harry Potter people <laughs> complaining. <laughs> So what they do now with the woolly owls, how much? Five. I got to move. OK. <laughs> Don't I get seniority for being so old? Keep it rolling. All right. Anyway. Um, so we have, again, we have the airport as one of the issues. Uh, interesting, I got this. This is in the wheel well of a, of a, of a plane at Kennedy Airport. Oh. They found the barn owl. A female, obviously, with all the spots. Uh, other uh, predation may occur from great horned owls. We have, uh, in the last few years, great horned owls have started nesting in Jamaica Bay. Years and years ago, we never, it was very rare. But now they're nesting around the bay. And I hear one calling about a couple of hundred feet behind that barn owl box. <laughs> very good. <laughs> And uh, I actually heard that from my house in Broad Channel one night, I, 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, I don't believe this. I looked out, and there was a, a, a great horned owl on a piling out there hooting away. What he was hooting at was a fake owl on my neighbor's roof. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And I guess a black rat snake, this is a black racer, but a black rat snake could be a problem for getting into. But there's our little white-footed mice. They seem to have taken over the area now that... Uh, I find fewer meadow bowls, so the habitats have changed. Things are growing up everywhere. And I find more of these white-footed mice everywhere. So, and also, no way rat. So meadow vole, no way rat, white-footed mice would be your predators. There's some pellets. Uh, this, look at this box. That's uh, <clears throat> probably five years' worth of pellets. We didn't get to clean this one out. We find it. So they do take a, a lot of rodents. It's estimated that a family uh, of owls will take over a thousand uh, rodents every year. This was supposed to be a video, but it's not going to work, as is that one. So we're putting these kids to good use, putting up uh, another owl box, at least one a year to replace some of the others, as well as osprey platforms uh, throughout the bay. We had no ospreys, by the way, until 1990, first nesting pair for New York City. We now have 25 nesting pair in Jamaica Bay. And finally, 
my cat princess inspecting a box, make sure it uh, works, the little owl. And uh, Estee Lauder Company uh, gave us $250 to uh, put a box there. So anyone that wants to put a box up in Jamaica Bay for 250 bucks, you know, we'll put one up for you. And Jamaica Bay, finally, great place. Uh, people don't realize how many bird species we get there. Over 340 species have been documented in the bay. These are oyster catches in the fall, staging. So if you've never been to the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge, I, I recommend it, especially in the months of May and through the summer when all the shorebirds are on my baby back. Thank you very much. Questions? No questions. You, you answered all their questions. That's great. They don't think. Right, there we go. We, we, got we got one coming up. You shamed them into it. <laughs> uh, could you talk about what the meaning of true owl is? That's something, a, a term that I came across. I, I think that uh, the barn owl is maybe not technically a, quote, true owl. Um, consider one of the grass owls. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe, uh, what, maybe in the genus Bubo? Well, would be. Rich Kelly, would you know? Yeah. Different. Yeah, barn owls in a different family. The other owls in, in the Bubo, is it? The family? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Don.